Hi everyone and welcome to Venu's weekly cricket catch up. Um, I've got Fizan joining me um, for this week. How are you Fizan? I'm good, thank you very much. Really looking forward to the third edition, isn't it? Yeah, it's is third edition. Third edition. Yeah, yeah. of uh, Venu's weekly cricket catch up. Really looking forward to this week. Yes. And um, as you may know, there's been a lot of cricket that has been going on um, this week and Fizan has been posting some videos on that, such as he's been reviewing the T20 series between Pakistan and um, New Zealand. And also he's been reviewing the Australia-India test match. And um, yes, a lot of cricket, a lot of talking points for Zahn. Some good, some good moments, some bad moments, and some, quite frankly, some funny moments as well. So quite a lot to talk about this week. So first things first, let's talk about the demolition job that Australia did on India. It was a demolition job. The fact that India got bowled out for their lowest ever test um, total of 36 runs. Yep. I think I'm pretty sure I'm right. It's 36 yeah, runs. It's, don't worry, I've been posting it a lot on uh, social media for uh, in uh, ESPN Crick Info uh, posts. So 36, I, I know for sure it's 36, so don't worry. Yeah, it's 36 <laughs> runs. I just, as, as um, for those of you who may watch the, the test review, that um, Fizan, I, uh, myself and Ashtad did, I think I'm just very disappointed um, the fact that India got bowled out for that for that total. Um, I was, the first two days of the test match looked very close for Fizan, didn't it? And uh, it was quite even Stevens going to the third third day and fair play to the Australia bowlers, in particular Hazelwood and Cummins for um, bowling out India and they'll just, I think, to be honest, I think any any other batting lineup in the world right now would have struggled against that um, pace, pace attack from um, Cummins and Hazelwood. So fair play to Australia. That means they're one nil up, um, up in the four match series. And as the big news is, Kohli is flying home, and because his wife's um, ex they're expecting the first child, and potentially Warner might be back for Australia. Um, for the second test in Melbourne, which starts on Boxing Day. So India's batting gets weaker and potentially Australia's team will get stronger. So, yeah, it was just quite a disappointing end to the test match. However, fair play, well done to Australia for um, especially Cummins and Hazelwood. What would you like to say, Vizal? On, um, on, uh, one, on Australia's bowling performance and two, on India's batting. Yeah, 100%. I think, um, as you said, the first few days were very competitive and it looked like we might get, you know, four or five days of uh, pretty yeah. good cricket. Uh, but day three, just, uh, yeah, a perfect storm, really, of uh, Australia bowling very well, India uh, kind of not applying themselves correctly. And, yeah, it just all came to, yeah, it just all came to a tipping point really where eventually India got bowled out to th for 36, which is uh, their lowest test score uh, in an innings. So, yes, and yeah, that, that, they'll be really disappointed with that. And especially yeah. with the fact that now, as you said, Kohli is going home, it's almost like the worst timing. Obviously, we, no one can hold it against him because he's going mm -hmm. home for the birth of his first child. But the timing couldn't be worse after uh, suffering your test lowest um Score so India gonna have to brush themselves off, uh, no, dust themselves off basically, and come back now uh, with a very very renewed mentality going into the second uh, test. And something that I think is very important, as you said, is that not only is Kohli going to be absent, but I think most likely Mohammad Shami won't be uh, in that second test after having scans on a um, on an arm, which I think we're going to touch upon actually. So. I won't go too much into that. But yeah, but in the test match as a whole, um, it's now really very much in favour of Australia because yeah. I think this first test was a chance for India to get on the board and get in front. But now that Kohli's missing, as you said, Warner might be coming back, it's going to be difficult for them to really uh, grab hold of this series. And I'm pretty sure Australia will not want to let go of their strangle stranglehold on it. Yes, and... As we know, they are, they are a ruthless team, and I'm sure Tim Payne will tell his bowlers, "You need to get, you need to keep being ruthless." And talking about the bowlers, I'm talking about the, the bowling performance in particular for Australia. Um, Josh Hazelwood jumped to fifth 
in the ICC test bowling rankings. He was ninth before, and um, he's currently on 805 points. And Pat Cummins um, is top of the table with a 910 points. So it's, um, I think it's interesting to mention those two bowlers because they're both doing really well at the moment. And um, I think they'll be, if you were to do a world test 11 at the moment, those two will be in that team. Would you, wouldn't you agree for some? Yeah. I mean, both are just incredible performance uh, performers, sorry, even on the, in the test uh, arena. And I think even it's just incredible that now in ODIs, they're both, performing mm. at such high levels. Uh, Hazelwood wasn't seen as a white ball bowler, but now in ODIs, especially, uh, well, especially, he's been bowling very well. And it's funny because he doesn't really do too much differently to what he yeah. does uh, in tests. He just hits a very, very good line and length and gets a bit of nibble off the seam. And he does have slight variations, but it's not too dissimilar to how he bowls um, in test matches. And I think before he was seen as almost like a poor man's McGraw, and he was in the shadow of him and I'm not good. like obviously we know how good McGraw is and I'm not good. I'm not saying that Hayeswood's as good as McGraw but I think he has the right now to be seen as a very good player in his own right rather than just being a poor man's McGraw which I think a lot of people did see him as uh, previously because he was very similar in terms of the the way he bowls um, and the type of player he is but yeah he's definitely common and we know obviously Pat Cummins tops the rankings and We've talked about him a lot in our in the review we did, how good he is. But yeah, Australia are, and we haven't even mentioned Mitchell Stark, obviously, um, who has mm. the X factor. So they are in a very good spot uh, bowling wise. Yes, hundred percent, and um, yeah, definitely probably up there with New Zealand as the best bowling um, attacks in Test match cricket. So, and as you're saying, fair play to Hazelwood. For um, you know, he's made a big improvement over the last couple of years. So fair play to him, and obviously Pat Cummins for leading the uh, the uh, the Test rankings. Now, if you want to have a more in depth analysis or more in depth in review of the Test match, do watch um, the video Fizan did on the Test match. So do watch that. I think it's already been posted up. But um, we're still going to for a second talk about. It, we're still going to talk about the Test match in. And we're going to talk about India selection issues. So, as you know, Fizan and um, Kohli is flying back home, and um, also another big uh, concern for India is that Mohammed Shami actually got a uh, got hit in the on on the elbow. It was the elbow, I think, and he had to retire yeah. hurt during the first innings, and as a result, he couldn't bowl um, during Australia's chase. So that was severely dent India, and there are. All- you know, they were severe, they were reduced to their lowest ever test totals in Adelaide. They'll be without Kohli. They won't have Rohit Sharma. There's some, there's some, um, there, there's going to be a big selection headache for um, India going to the second test match. Wouldn't you agree, Fazan? Yeah, as, as I've uh, kind of touched upon, I think Shami not being there on top of obviously Kohli going home, uh, Rohit Sharma, um, I think, you know, you, um, yeah, very nicely have sent me a few nice little notes that you've done and you uh, and I read through them and one of the points you made was Rohit Sharma not being available for the third test uh, which is a really good point because of the third quarantine. test yes. yeah yeah uh, so at the moment and obviously uh, Ishan Sharma is already injured so I think it's now going to be a case of who's going to bowl alongside Bumrah and uh, who is it uh, it's like yeah who's the other fast Mohammed bowler Saini and or Mohammed Siraj no, no, who's the other bowler that... Um, oh, Ishan Sharma is missing. No, no, who bowled in the first test with Bumra. I've forgotten his name. Um, oh, it's Yadav, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Yadav. Yeah, yeah Umesh Yadav. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was thinking he's... But I was thinking there's Kuldeep Yadav, but I was thinking it's there Umesh is Yadav. another one. Yeah, Umesh Yadav, yeah, yeah sorry. Umesh Yadav and uh, uh, Bumra, obviously. So, who, as you said, yeah, Saini or Siraj. I think Saini bowled quite well in the... Uh, yeah, what, some of the yeah. white ball games. So, did, I'm assuming, yes. so I'm assuming they might pick him. Um, so apparently there's like, I saw a cup, an article talking about um, Natarajan because he bowled well uh, mm. on his debut in the ODI saying that, oh, they should see if they can call him up and at least he can play the third, four, uh, third and fourth test after quarantine. Uh, but I think it's way too early for someone like him after just making his debut. So I think they're kind of clutching at straws there. But they're in a very precarious position here and it can go one of two ways. Either these people who 
are not regulars and potentially fringe players or uh, young younger players come in and they really make a big impact. Um, or it can go, unfortunately, the other way for India, which is uh, they don't perform well and Australia really dominate not just with the ball, but with the bat potentially in the next uh, test match. But we'll see. It's in the balance at the moment in terms of uh, how India are going to respond to this. Uh, but at the moment, I think Australia are in the driving seat. Yeah, 100%. Australia are in the driving seat. seat and um, yeah, I think don't look good for India, but need, but never write them off. They're a, they're a class act and there's some quality players in there. And um, yeah, I'm sure hopefully I'm, the next few test matches will be um, a closer contest than the one we've just had. So that's the test match all kind of wrapped up now. Um, so the next the next series, that's the other series that's taking place at the moment is the Pakistan um, New Zealand T20 series. So the second um, T20 occurred today and Fizan, unfortunately, Pakistan didn't win that one. New Zealand comfortably won that um, match with nine wickets. It was a story of two two batsmen um, from both uh, from both sides making not outs. So it was um, Hafiz's classy ninety nine not out. Unlucky not to get a hundred. Did a, a David Milan, and um, you know he batted really well to get um, Pakistan to a respectful um, total of um, one hundred and sixty odd. And it was um, Seifert's eighty four not out that took. New Zealand to that to Pakistan's total to give them a 2 0 unassailable series victory for them. So things are looking good for New Zealand, aren't they, Fizan, going forward? Yeah, I mean, I think we've mentioned this a few times. This New Zealand is so strong in every format. And again, they're showing with, I think, Trent Bolt himself and Ken Williamson coming into the fray. Uh, they just showed again how good they are. And uh, Pakistan, uh, no, getting a slightly bigger score than the 150 that they got in the first T20 of 163. But again, we struggled early doors. Um, Mohamed Hafiz, uh, as you said, uh, helped us recover with a really quality 99 not out. And uh, we've had a little joke and obviously, you know, you've claimed him as the best T20 cricketer, which you know, I'm very happy to claim. For 2020, for this year. For this, yeah, yeah. For this, for this year. Yeah. Which, you know, he's got a massive claim to be alongside, I guess, we're talking about Dawood Milan, Bob Ross, and those types of players, I guess. Yeah. Um, which I'm sure, best, eventually. Yeah. Yeah, which I'm sure we'll discuss in detail at another point. But I think, yeah, just just so good. And Cipher, though, as you said, just again, I think another fifty from him and Williamson yeah. came in and did the business with a fifty as well. They just saw them home with nine wickets to spare, and it was just way too easy, unfortunately. And it was easy, but, wasn't it? Pakistan have not really adapted to the wicket well enough, the wickets well enough in New Zealand. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. I would be, uh, I'd be surprised if we get something from the third T20, but you never know. And with us, you know, we, we might have a very, would need to have a very good uh, bowling display and some solid batting, but Bob Razum unfortunately has been a huge miss. And really, if you want to be a top, top team, uh, yes, your best player will be a miss, but it shouldn't, I think you need to be more competitive than we have been. I think it it shows maybe the selectors that they need to have a look at the team and think we need to kind of rethink maybe and rejig a little bit to think about how we can not be so reliant on one player. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so they, the, the final um, T20 starts on, um, is on um, Tuesday, so Tuesday morning UK time. So, um, yeah, hopefully Pakistan get a, Get a, um, get a a win because I predicted a two one um, win for New Zealand, so I want to get something right. And to follow up, the Test series starts soon after that. Actually, on the Friday, um, actually starts a Boxing Day, so it actually starts um, Friday evening on Christmas Day because New Zealand are twelve hours ahead. So looking forward to that series, to Um Any news on Barbarazem? We will he make that the, te- the first Test on Boxing Day? Um, there's no official news as of yet. I think they're still looking at it, but I, I doubt he will be. Um, I know a lot of people are saying that he may be, but I just think with a broken thumb, uh, normally it takes a lot longer than what they were uh, predicting. But it might be just because you know these athletes get prime care, don't they? Really. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, so the Sri Lanka South Africa tour. So, um, so Sri Lanka. 
um, are playing um, South Africa in, I think the first test is on Boxing Day and it's at Centurion. Um, two South Africa COVID um, positive tests at the moment. So hopefully th you know, things won't be similar to um, England as England had to call the tour sh short. So hopefully that the, the um, series goes ahead. So we have three test matches to look forward to on Boxing Day. You could potentially have, I'm doing the maths here, you could have around about 20 hours of cricket, of test match cricket. So I'll be tuning in. So, um, yeah, so looking forward to that. Um, and I think because of COVID this year, I think um, a lot of fixtures are kind of being crammed together at the at, at, at um, this part of the year. So, yeah, good, good to, I'm looking forward to that for um, Boxing Day. Um, so the next talking point, Fizan, is, um, is kind of, Moving on from or adding to the conversation we had, I think on two weeks ago for our first weekly show was um, the concussion debate. So um, there were a few notable cases where Paul uh, Will um, Pogot Pogotsky, yeah, was it again for some? Will Pogotsky, yeah, Will Pogotsky got hit um, during a, um, I think it was a Sheffield Shield match, and um, he was concussed, and as a result, he's not playing in his first test match and there was another yeah. case in a, in a tour match yeah in a tour India. match oh sorry in a tour match because india and there was another case of um a batsman getting concussed i think a fielder getting concussed i think Cam um, cameron Will green got hit um, green got hit while, in the head while as well. bowling yeah but um what i'm going to allude to now is on is that there's some talk in the media about banning the bouncing cricket um now Obviously, there's the concussion substitute debate, and I think it's a it's good addition to cricket now that there's a. Um, and I do think there needs to be some clarification um, on that matter after the Ravi Dadeja incident. The the like for like replacement, I think they need to think about that to make it uh, fairer for teams. But I think that's a really good um, addition to cricket, and um, what do you think about banning banning a bouncer, and especially? potentially banning the bouncer to tail enders because Mohamed Shami got injured to um, a bouncer. And um, what do you think about protecting, especially the tail enders to short pitch bowling? What do you think about banning the bouncer? Or do you think instead of banning the bouncer, the batsmen have to have a better technique? What's your view on this? Yeah, because I think the, the cricket as a game is, has become so batsman heavy Anyway, and it's so much in favour of the batsman, if I'm being honest with you, that I, d I don't see why it should be banned. I think it needs to be a case of skill um, in terms of improving technique. And if batsmen are not... Look, at the end of the day, you, you can look at it one of two ways. If you're not happy to play a bouncer, then you duck and you weave, and that's simple, especially in test cricket. And that's something that you can do in the nets. So... You can do it a tennis ball on the nets, like uh, kids do it. So I just don't see why. I, I personally don't think it's an issue. I think it's something that people who maybe are looking at it from the outside and saying, oh, you know, why are people doing this? But I think for people who really know their cricket, they'll know that, look, the bounce is something they utilise and there's a reason why you, you're not allowed to overuse it um, because, yeah, it can be dangerous. But uh, now and then as a surprise tactic to... Uh, get a batsman out etc or to make him think oh, okay I'm, I might not just be bowling full etc it's a very useful tool and I think to take that away from a bowler especially when a batsman seem to have we're in a, an age of cricket where batsmen seem to have most of the advantages nowadays um, I just think it would be a very very bad decision yeah I, f I agree with you Fazan. I think you've made some excellent points there and I think it would take if the bouncer was banned I think it would take away the spectacle of test match cricket, I think there's nothing better seeing a fast bowler coming in, bowling some short balls, and there's the field around with a short leg and trying to you know get the batsman out. And I think, I do think over the last few years, batsman techniques against short pitch bowling has, hasn't been excellent. And I do think batsmen do need to work on playing the short ball a lot better. So I think, I think the concussion, um, Sub substitution is an excellent thing for cricket and secondly I think yeah keep the bouncer um, so yeah 
I think that's that's basically that wrapped up. Um, so our next talking point, um, there is a uh, another uh, franchise cricket tournament going on. There's always seems to be a franchise cricket tournament going on. I think because of COVID, I think for the last three four months there's been every month there's been you know, I think this was the IPL, then it was the Caribbean Premier League, then the PSL, then the LPL, and now it's the Big Bash League. So um, Dan Christian, who I think is a quality T20 player. A blistering 15 ball half century, the second fastest in Big Bash League history, and um, basically propelled Sydney Sixers to a um, a decent um, total, and um, and as a result they were able to beat the Adelaide Strikers, and um, yeah, um, the Big Bash League is going going well at the moment for Zan. I think. Trying to think who's leading um, the Big Bash League at the moment. I think it's the Hobart Hurricanes who are leading at the moment. There's a really um, interesting point you made here, actually, because obviously, you know, there's the super sub that's um, in the Big Bash. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Because that's one of the rules that obviously they've got. Which What do you think was, about that? I think the rules are really weird, to be honest with you. Um, I, I know that a lot of uh, players said that, look, uh, cricket and T20 cricket is already complicated enough for people who are casuals to follow or are just you know, go after work and they're not necessarily that in tune with cricket and then to add new rules it makes it alienates people um mm. so i think to have it more consistent is better um the other point actually before i go on to the sub is that is i thought it was disappointing that they're doing the franchise tournament during when australia have a, a tour going on because then obviously all the top a lot of the top australian players who would normally play in the big bash they're not mm. playing in it. So I don't know whether it's because it's been rescheduled because of COVID, et cetera. But either way, I think the timing could have been better so that you could have had those players being included. But it might be to do a tour, getting moved, et cetera. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you said here that obviously uh, the uh, Adelaide Strikers used a sub for the second time this season and they brought in Liam Scott. He went for 21 in, 28 sorry, in, in uh, two overs. So obviously that doesn't seem like a very good decision in the end. Uh, but yeah, it's, just, it's a weird one, isn't it? Danny Briggs, be, Danny Briggs being subbed out for the second time, he'll be feeling, he'll yeah. be feeling really low at the moment. Um, I think, yeah, I'm not really a big fan of this substitution thing in cricket. It doesn't work for the game. Um, I know, obviously, concussion subs fine, but having actual substitutions, um, yeah, I don't know what the rules are. I think the bowler can only bowl one over, and then you can sub sub them. And um, yeah, and the fact that he went out, <laughs> he went for 28 in two overs. Um, yeah, wasn't an excellent substitution for them. But um, yeah, it'd be, I think um, you're right in saying that it's, it's quite disappointing that the, the, you know, the big, t- big players, much like um, Steve Smith, David Warner, Mitchell Stark, these, you know, these A-star players can't play in the Big Bash League. It's kind of diluted it, um, the tournament a bit, but it is what it is. I'm just glad test crickets. So test crickets on at the moment. So I think that's. I do think COVID probably probably is a factor for Zong. So going from one um, franchise cricket to another. So the Lankan Premier League, the inaugural Lankan Premier League, um, came to a conclusion earlier this week. Um, so the Jaffna Stallions won the first um, ever um, Lankan Premier League. So um, were you rooting for Jaffna? Who yeah, I was. Right? Yes, you were. You were yeah. happy, happy boy. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, a uh, a really strong opening stand from um, Shah Malik and Dana Jai De Silva um, set the innings up for Jaffna Stallions, and then uh, Tisara Pirara, as he normally does, hit um, some um, some solid runs near the end of their their innings, and um, and a really dominant bowling effort. By Jaffna Stallions to um, to win, and they were clearly the best team in the final, and they were winning by a margin of 53 runs. So it was quite a demolition job. Mm. So fair play to Jaffna Stallions, and um, it's good to see that Sri Lanka now got a franchise cricket um, tournament up and running um, alongside Pakistan, the Caribbean, uh, Australia. So yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think that's good for cricket on the whole and good for Sri Lankan cricket. Wouldn't you agree, Fizan? Yeah, yeah, I think it's good just to... I think a lot of the players who came from abroad, like Shah Malik, etc., they all said they really enjoyed it. Um, and I think as a whole, the 
the tournament seems to have been successful, uh, especially for a first uh, year. And it, it's good because this is the only way that, uh, you know, countries are going to really improve uh, into, at a grassroots level in uh, T20 cricket anyway, and white ball cricket. Uh, who knows, it could it, it trickle down uh, to test cricket as well. But I just think in terms of fielding, etc., has always seen the impact that T20 cricket's had in general mm. uh, and kind of being more innovative. So hopefully the Sri Lankan youngsters coming through will be able to get, uh, will, will get chances, which it looks like they are. And then they can come through. I think already, I think it's like three debutants have been, uh, there's three debutants uh, in the squad for, uh, against uh, South Africa. So one of them is Hasaranga, who bowled really well, the leg spinner. Yeah. And yeah, he bowled yeah. really well it's in the final. Um, and I watched the final actually, and he, he looks very good. Okay. Um, and yeah, I just think uh, Jaffna Salins just too, were too strong on the day, I think, in the end. And their bowling, I think, definitely stood out for me. Um, I think Mohamed Amr, obviously, on the, um, for the Gladiators, uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to do enough. And the captain, I've forgotten what his name is, but he basically was batting with one leg. Um, he was injured when, when they were trying to chase. And uh, he ended up getting out, but he put in a really almighty performance trying to get them to uh, the total. So, yeah, um, it was it was very enjoyable watch, to be honest with you, and it was nice to, to watch. And there's some players that I'm not too familiar with, so it was good to improve uh, my knowledge as well. But, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the matches that I watched. Yeah, it's good to hear for Zan. Hopefully, uh, you know, this... Uh, Hopefully, they know the money that's been created from this, and hopefully, the younger players that have given some exposure. Hopefully, it does trickle down to Sri Lankan first team cricket, especially Test cricket, um, because I think Sri Lanka's performance in Test cricket hasn't been excellent as of late. So, hopefully, it improves that. So, um, you uh, actually made a point of Mohammed Amir, and uh, he was actually playing for. Um, he was actually playing for what team was he playing for? Was Mohamed Amir? Yeah, he was actually playing for um, the it's, losing it, team, the Gold Gladiators. Gold Gladiators, yeah. Yes. So, um, quite sad news. He's actually um, announced his retirement from um, from international cricket. Really sad news. And I think growing up, Mohamed Amir was that, I always remember him as that 17-year-old making that amazing breakthrough in international cricket and just batsmen just couldn't play him. And obviously, he had the unfortunate um, max-fixing issue that um, he w- couldn't play for a few years and I think that he was harshly treated by that personally and um, yeah but he you know he's made made a good comeback for Pakistan and he's a quality player quality bowler and if there's you know if any bo- young bowlers out there want to see how to bowl I think he's one of the bowlers to watch out for uh, to look out and learn because he's technically he's very good and I still remember the way he got um uh, who's it? Um, Virat Kohli out in the ICC Champions Trophy um, final. You were there, Fizan, weren't you? A beautiful ball to get yeah, Virat Kohli out. There. Quality bowler, but quite sad the way it's ended. Wouldn't you agree, Fizan? Yeah, I mean, I could talk, I could do an hour video on this to honest with you because I, I've I'm very I've got very strong opinions on uh, on him and I think look as you said I think he actually burst on the scene when he was seventeen. Uh, so yeah, so when he was. 17, yeah. 18, and he was just so good. He was bowling 90 plus miles an hour, swinging the ball, and just yeah. incredible with, with his long hair and yeah, yeah, just running in and just incredible. Uh, obviously, he had that that issue when he was only 17, where he overstepped, and there was the whole match fixing issue. Yeah, and, very smart. Um, look, I, I mean, whatever your opinion is of him because of that, I think you need to take into consideration that he was only 17, or I think he was 19 actually. Um, he'd played two years or a so year young man, basically. Yeah, and obviously was influenced into it. So people need to take that into consideration. And he did his time and he five years um, out of, uh, you know, cricket, uh, including some jail time as well. So look, I mean, to come back. And then I think the first year he was back, he bowled the most overs out of any other bowler. Uh, so we, Pakistan basically bowled him into the ground, unfortunately. Um, but as a player, and then he stopped playing test cricket because he just didn't see... Uh, himself being able to play all three formats long term and then foc- uh, focused on white ball cricket. Obviously, he's played some franchise cricket, as you said, for like um, he played at Bangladesh Premier League 
uh, played the Lanka Premier League. I think he's played, he played T20 Blast, etc. Very, very skilled bowler. If you're a left arm bowler who's watching this and want to see tips and tricks and go and watch him, obviously you've got the greats like Wasi Makram, but he will be known as, uh, unfortunately, uh, Mohamed Amara as someone who unfortunately didn't fulfill his potential, but that's just because of those five years that he lost, really. Yeah. Um, and he Imagine. came back, he came back, as you said, with some. He came, when he came back, he was still very good. And as you said, he had some magical spells like the spell against uh, India in the Champions Trophy where he got out Rohit Sharma and then he got out Virat Kohli and just bowled so well. Uh, but unfortunately, I just think those five years out, he just wasn't the same player and it, it did change yeah. him. And, uh, and that's, that's only natural. And I just think he was never quite able to get back that potential. I think his potential was about up here. And after those five years, it was about here. And he and unfortunately just not able to get up to where he mm-hmm. he could have yeah. been. Uh, but such an incredible player. And as a Pakistani, um, I, I knew that if he's playing for us, we've got a chance. And look, I'm not going to try and compare him to someone like, for example, Mitchell Stark because of how good he is. But I guess when Australians think about Mitchell Stark, especially in the white ball game, I know they're probably thinking, look, if he's in our team, uh, you know, he's always got a wicket in him. He, he could get the breakthrough. And that's kind of how... Pakistanis would feel about Muhammad Amri or me personally anyway um, really sad I think the reason why he's retired is not because he's old and doesn't want to play international cricket because he's only 29 or 30 uh, the reason why is actually because there's been disagreement with uh, Miss Father head coach and selectors and uh, he feels like he hasn't been treated properly I don't know the ins and outs of it but um, yes yeah, and he's basically said that he feels like he's been mistreated uh, and treated poorly so he said that he doesn't want to be available to, for selection um, so whether we, I, I hope they resolve it and we do see him back because in the T20 World Cups are coming up both of them back to back I think he would he would still be very very useful for us um, but we'll see if, if this is him retired then look I mean you can't, as a Pakistani, anyone who says that he hasn't given his all, he definitely has because the amount of overs he bowled um, for Pakistan and especially in Test cricket bowling overs that normally a spinner would bowl, uh, especially when he came back. I mean, he's given a lot for the country, so I think we've got to just be grateful for the player he is. So, yeah, disappointing and, and quite upsetting in degree and, to a degree. And hopefully, it's not the last we see of him. We'll see him in franchise cricket, but it'd be nice to see him in uh, Pakistan green again. But we'll see. Yes, we'll see. I, you know, I, as a neutral, I always always like watching Mohammed Amir bowl for Pakistan. It's or I always tune in and always make you know always um, follow whenever he's bowling because you know he's an X-factor bowler. So um, yeah, so going from one Pakistan player to another, um, we're going to talk about Mohammed Hafiz's form in T20 cricket. Um, his 2020 um, form in the year 2020 has been excellent for Zan, hasn't it? And not bad for a 40 year old. Not bad. He's doing well. And he's, he's had, you know, I think, he was, I think he was away from the team for a while. He was more of a test match batsman, really. And now he's really rediscovered his form and, and really doing well in T20 cricket for Pakistan. Wouldn't you agree for Zan? Yeah. I mean, he was, he's someone who uh, is more of a traditional classical batsman when he first was in the team. Uh, playing Test cricket, ODI cricket, etc. I think he was an opener uh, at some points, especially in uh, in ODIs, etc. And he's kind of re redis- well, remolded himself, and uh, yeah, he's made himself into a a T Twenty specialist almost. And it, what it's meant is, it's meant that he is able to uh, prolong his career, and similar to like Shaw Mike did for Pakistan. Um, who's now playing franchise cricket, and he did the same thing. But Hafiz has done it to a, a degree where he is up there as being now one of the best T20 batsmen around. And I think, um, I don't know what his stats are now, but in the last year and a half, he averaged 90 or something around those figures in T20 cricket. Just mm-hmm. incredible bats. And in my opinion, the best number four in T20 cricket at the moment. And uh, after someone that 99 not out just shows how good he is. Um, in a format. Yeah. I mean, I just uh, hope that he carries that form through to um, mm. the T20 World Cup next year. And then if he does play the falling one, 
Um, and I'm sure after those, at least after those two, he'll be done. But if he can carry some of that form into one of those tournaments, then, you know, who knows? Um, at least we'll have, uh, might have a shout. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, so I think he's one of the batsmen to look out for in 2021, alongside um, Tim Seifert of New Zealand. So, um, yeah, so that's Mohamed Hafiz wrapped up. Now, uh, moving now, instead of international cricket, we're going to look at domestic cricket, in particular in England domestic cricket. We're going to look at the county championship. Now, you may have heard, Fizan, that um, the county, county championship has been restructured for the 2021 season. I think this is down to um, uh, discussions between ECB and the chairs of the first-class counties. They're trying to mitigate any further disruption from COVID-19 during the 2021 season. And as a result, what they've done is they have um, split the um, 18 um, counties um, into three groups, okay? And um, yeah, so yeah, they've just been split into three groups. And I think this this year in 2020 season, um, the 18 counties split into three regional groups of six, and they played a single fixture between each opponent and the top two teams from each group progress into the final. However, um, instead of having a single fixture against each opponent, uh, the next year's competition, there'll still be three groups, three seeded groups, with 10 home and away fixtures, followed by a further round of games in which the top, middle and bottom two of each group from the three new divisions will play further games against each other for a total of 14 fixtures. And then the top team in the newly configured Division One will be crowned winners and will be awarded a traditional Lord's Taverners trophy. However, the first and second team um, um, finishers will compete at Lord's for the Bob Willis trophy and basically a repeat of the 2020 um, final um, season where Essex were crowned the winners. And um, yeah, I think it's just been restructured. After, I just think... Um, the count, the counties just don't want further disruption due to COVID. But I just don't see why they're changing it. But this is so sure random. This is so random. You're explaining it to know. me, and, I, and I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I was trying to follow you, and I, and I've got, I've even got the yeah. notes, and I still don't understand it. So, um, I don't understand it. Like it just sounds stupid. And from from what it sounds like, it sounds like then some teams might not get the same amount of games as others because they. If they're low, lower ranked, I guess in the group, I don't yeah. know. We'll which see. is just, which we'll is see. even more so, silly because you want everyone to get the same amount of cricket, right? Surely. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I just think if you at grassroots level, which then feeds into county cricket, you want. I don't know. I just I, I agree with you. I don't know why they've tried. They've obviously tried to change it, maybe because it looks to me maybe to do a location, so mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. counties that are closer to each. Although. Yeah, that are in close down to location. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's fine. But then try and keep it to a a, a kind of easy, followable, followable even um, format, which this doesn't really seem to be. But I don't know. I guess cricket's cricket, so we'll see. Maybe when it starts, we'll get more of a hold on it uh, when it gets closer to the time. But yes. it just seems very, very random and strange to be honest with you. To me, but I'm a bit of a traditionalist to, to a degree, so. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, I'm looking forward to the, the, the summer to roll on in the UK. Um, but um, yeah, I just think we'll see. We'll see what the um, what the actual format will be in due course. Now, our final talking point of today, we're going to look at um, the there's some few issues creeping up in South Africa in terms of the Sri Lanka tour and the Australia tour that's um, later on in um, in, in February 2021. Um, so. The Safra squad face, set to face Sri Lanka in the Boxing Day Test match at Centurion have been, has been um, affected by a couple of players testing positive and as a result, they had to be removed from the group. So it's a setback for Cricket South Africa once again. And I'm just hoping, I'm just hoping, fingers crossed, that the Sri Lanka tour does go ahead and you won't have a similar result of what happened during the England tour where the ODI series was cut short and the England team had to fly back early. And also, um, i just hoping that the integrity of the biosecurity bubble um, that the tourists at Sri Lanka have, I hope it holds. 
and um, and also there is a bit of an issue with um, the Australia tour of South Africa because um, the Earl Eddings, the Cricket Australia chairman, has stressed the safety of the national team's players and staff will not be compromised in any way. So Australia have said, look, Cricket South Africa, you've got to sort it out and you've got to ensure to us that similar things will not occur um, that happened on during the England tour and hopefully that doesn't occur during the Sri Lanka tour. So I think um, ESPN Cricket Fire has actually reported because um, Cricket Australia are quite... Um, they are obviously concerned about the developments that are happening in, in South Africa at the moment. They're actually floating the possibility of the free test in South Africa um, being moved to Perth in Australia. However, I think Cricket Australia do want to tour um, South Africa. And I think for the fans, it'd be great to see Australia touring South Africa. And um, yeah, because last time they toured, I think, I'm not sure what, the result was, but I think it was a tight contest. So that that would be good. So some issues arising there for Zan in South Africa. Yeah, um, very very. I don't know what's what's going on in South Africa, but everyone seems to be getting COVID going to South Africa, which is no laughing matter, obviously. But it just I don't know maybe the biosecure bubble that um, cricket South Africa are putting in place is is it not being followed or I don't know what's mm. going on. It just doesn't seem very good because obviously they had issues with England already as well. So. Not yeah. sure what's going on there, and but hopefully the tour goes ahead with Sri Lanka because it would be good to see um, a big blow for Sri Lanka. I think Angelo Matthews is injured, by the way. Um, so that's, oh, really? That's a, that's a very, very a huge blow. blow because that's like Barbara Azam getting injured for. Why are yeah. these these key the best players for every team getting injured? <laughs> Barbara Azam, Pakistan. Um, Angelo Matthews, Sri Lanka. Virat Kohli is obviously not injured, but flying yeah. home. It's just. I don't know, man. Oh well. Yeah, this is anyway. cricket on. That's the main yeah. thing, and and that comes that kind of concludes the you know all our topics that we've raised for this this week week. Um, so a lot of cricket to look out for um, during Boxing Day. You've got the free test matches, so do follow that. So you've got um, Pakistan starting their first test match against New Zealand. You've got Australia against India at the at the at the um, iconic uh, Melbourne. Boxing Day test match, and you hopefully will have South Africa Sri Lanka test match starting at Centurion. So three test matches to um, watch out for, and also you've got the final um, T20, the third T20 between New Zealand and Pakistan on Tuesday. So a lot of cricket to look forward to, Fazan, over the next week or so. Yeah, yeah, loads to look forward to. So hopefully we get, um, yeah, that tour of uh, well that Sri Lanka South Africa fixture. Uh, stays yes. on Boxing Day, and as you said, yeah. there's a lot of uh, it's 20 hours. You said in the New York Test cricket to look potentially, to, but yeah, there's some there's some really good cricket to uh, check out before the New Year. So I'm looking forward to yeah seeing if we see any big knocks or uh, some uh, maybe collapses like India 36. Sorry, I had to drop that in there, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah I'm uh, gonna stop. Are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna stop until it happens to Pakistan. But yeah, I think. Look, it's um, it's good. It's good to see cricket, especially Test cricket, back. So, uh, yeah, yeah hopefully it continues. So, um, as you know, at the end of the vid- at the end of the segment, we like to um, give out awards to kind of give you a nice review, a nice recap of the week. So, a lot of cricket has uh, occurred this week, as you've just um, seen from this video. A lot of talking points, a lot of good cricket moments, a lot of but all for cricket moment. Um, some, you know, some, there's some, I think there's more definitely, uh, definitely a fail of the week. We're going to do that. Okay, Fizan. So, um, who's your star of the week for this week of cricket? I think it's quite um, an obvious one, personally. Oh, really? Okay. Actually, hmm. I was going to go with um, Pat Collins, but I don't know. Oh, can I just say something? Yeah. Big news, Mami Shami is out of rest, is out of the Australia tests with a fractured forearm. Yeah, wow. So he's out. That's huge news. Oh, oh, this is, this is, it's gone from bad to worse for India, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, it has. but, um, so again, they, they, you know, these lower order batsmen have to play the short ball better. 
um, as we were alluding to earlier on in the video. So, yeah, that's a big, big loss for India. Um, looks like, um, yeah, so we'll see um, who will replace him. So, yeah, so I thought I would just add that to that. So, um, start of the week, Fazan. Sorry about that. That's right. Yeah, I was, I was thinking Pat Cummins, but I feel like you, you've got someone else in mind. I was going to say Josh Hazelwood. Okay. Uh, I, I went with Pat Cummins just because he, um, even though I think he... he I think Pat Cummins took more wickets overall, even though he didn't take a five for in the second, because he took four in the second innings, three in the first. But the four wickets he took, uh, it was Kohli, Pajara, Agarwal. So, like, it was the top batsman. That's why I've gone with Cummins. But, um, yeah, I don't know what you think. Yeah, I agree, actually. I think I think the fact the thing is, Hazelwood got five wickets for eight runs, um, whereas... Cummins got four wickets for 21 runs, but as you correctly pointed out, Fizan, he did get the key wickets of Pujara and Kohli. So that really, really kind of um, finish of the innings for um, India. So yeah, let's go for Pat Cummins, actually. I was going to go for Josh Hazelwood, but you've changed my mind. <laughs> so um, Pat Cummins. Yeah, number one so, test yeah, bowler. Well done, Pat Cummins. Well done. Yeah, number one test bowler, quality bowler. He'll be definitely in probably one of my first picks to a world test 11. First pick probably for the Australian team. So fair play, Pat yeah. Cummins. You're doing really well. Um, so who would be your team of the week, Fazan? Um, you know what, actually? I think Australia did very well. Uh, but I'm kind of tempted to go to New Zealand, to be honest with you. Uh, just because I, I do think Australia uh, played well. But the first two days, uh, they were a bit precarious. I didn't think they were, I wasn't that impressed. It was only really day three where they obviously bowled very well. But I thought that was a combination of India batting very poorly as well. Whereas I feel yes. like with New Zealand, they've just carried on their form. They, I mean, obviously they blew Bucks, uh, us Pakistan away in the second T20. But even the first one without, I, I think the fact that they they won without Williamson, Bolt, Jameson, and Southie, um, and won quite comfortably, just I, I think for me means that I would pick them as team of the week. Yeah, and it shows that phenomenal squad depth. So you can say it's the squad of the week. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, as well as the team of the week. So that, yeah, I'll agree with you, Fazan. I think it's New Zealand. Actually, you know, um, sorry, you know, a star of the week. I just realized, yeah. I, don't, I don't know whether he has a claim for it. But, Cypher. Um, I was going to say Jacob Duffy Cypher. on his. Oh, why? Why debut? Jacob Duffy? Because he made his uh, debut and he. Uh, gave well, he didn't play the second T20, did he? No, no, he didn't. Because I think he's not on the squad for it. Um, but I'd, I was going to say just because of his debut, but. I guess maybe that's not enough reason to give it to him. But yeah, I think we'll stick with that. Yeah, time. fair point. Even Cypher has a has a claim to yeah. start of the week as well, that's considering true. he's a back-to-back 50s and he did a match winning innings in that chase against Pakistan the other yeah. day. So um, so we've gone for Pat Cummins for the start of the week, Team New Zealand for the team of the week. Now, who do you think needs to do the homework? I think, Fizan, I think player I think or it's got to be... Uh, let's do player first and then team next. Okay. I think personally, team is to be India, yeah, in yeah, terms 100%. of the, especially their batting 100% yeah. is their and batting. fielding, batting and fielding, yeah. Oh, fielding, yes. We'll actually, we'll, yeah, some of the drop catches were actually Shocking. borderline village, wasn't it? Yeah, that's very village. Um, but, um, so team India have to do the homework. I know, and as I was alluding to in the um previous video that we did on reviewing the test match, I said. India have to work on two things. They need to get the fielding coach to give them nice that they seem to be working on. Uh, so they need to work on that and also need to, as I said before, maybe set a bowling machine or get some of the bowlers just to bowl outside of stump, get swinging away at fullish length and they just need to practice at one, leaving the ball and two, um, trying to get the, don't get stuck in a crease and trying to get the front foot forward and play a proper cricket shot, get the, get, you know, get there you know, get the body behind the ball and also need to leave well as well. And also, um, considering Mohamed Shami now is missing the test series, they need to work on, the tail enders have to work on how to um, how to combat the short pitch bowling from the Australian pace attack. So, yeah, would you agree, Fazan? Yeah, 100%. I agree with everything you've said. Um, let's, let's now work, think about the player that really needs to do the homework. I've got... Um, Personally, I've still gone for the Indian batsman because mm -hmm. um, I just want to narrow it down. 
I've gone for um, the opener of India, Prithvi Sh- um, yeah, Prithvi Prithvi Shaw. Shaw. Yeah. Considering he got bowled out for the second ball of the Australian Test summer in the first innings, um, really, uh, I think uh, Stark bowled it, and I think he just had it was inside edge onto. He played on onto his thumbs, didn't he? Yeah, I he think did, he yeah. did. Yes. And in the second innings, he got out during his fourth ball. So he's only played six balls in that test. Shocking. Uh, bold Cummins again. He does look suspect to uh, balls that are sh- a bit straighter and he needs to sort his technique, doesn't he, Fizan? Yeah, a really big uh, gap between bat and pad, just really kind of basic. And, quite, sim- um, quite, quite similar to what, uh, what Johnny Bairstow had an issue, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, he I, had well, a big he, gap between pad yeah, and Yeah, he did. He did. Um, actually, what he reminds me of, though, is, I don't know if you remember, Sam Robinson... Who actually, oh, yeah. he played, I think only played one test. It was against, or one series. It was against India, I think, actually. Maybe it was Australia. I'd have forgotten. But it was in like 20, I don't know, 14, 15. Um, but basically, he was quite young and he came onto the scene. He was seen as like being this gun opener for, who would really solve England's op- uh, like opening struggles. But he had the same thing, like a massive issue between bat and pad. And um, like you can be great if you can be great hitting half volleys and you know, if it's in the slot, but when the ball's moving a little bit, if you're suspect and you're you're giving yourself, you're not solid in defence, yeah. especially in test yeah. cricket, and you don't have that solidity between bat and pad, then you're going to have issues. And unfortunately, yeah, he's, definitely. he's shown that he needs to tighten up uh, defensively. Yeah. Um, what would be your fail of the week? There's one big fail of the week. Do you, do you know what it is, Fizan? I was going to say Bumrah. Uh, tipping it over for six, but is, I think the other one is no. um, there's drop There's a bigger one than that, bigger than the one that Fizan. <laughs> they changed the basically changed India's first innings, changed maybe the oh, yeah, of course. Rahane's uh, run out of Cody that was shocking. I think for me, that's the fail of the week and also the moment of the week. Where, yeah, let's be honest, uh, Ajanka Rahane absolutely burned his captain, like yeah. when he, he was, was on, on fire as well, he basically set him on fire. I basically poured petrol over him. That's what he did. <laughs> it's, you know, he yeah, um, he absolutely burned Cody there, and they were looking really good, India. And Cody was on seventy four, and it was just comical, wasn't it? It was just, yeah. it was just international cricket. Come on, you second, can't do that. Only the second time you run out, and I'm pretty sure that the first time might have been uh, his fault, but this one definitely wasn't. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a yes said. Uh, got hit it. Uh, Rahane hit it straight to mid off. Uh, said to yes. Hazelwood, yeah. Yeah, Hazelwood ran round. And as I said in the review, Hazelwood didn't get him out with the uh, while bowling uh, Coley this time, but it was a run out. So he'll probably be sick of seeing Josh Hazelwood Coley. Um, but yeah, ran yeah. him out. And uh, Coley just did just gave up too much really because it was, uh, he was way too far down. Unfortunately, gave uh, Rohani a little look back. Obviously, not very happy, threw his gloves on the boundary. And uh, I think, yeah. Still- they're doing so well. Um, I think they'll 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 eight eight runs that partnership. They're looking really comfortable. Curly was looking in good touch. I think that he he had a century on the cards there, and mm. that really turned the game. And I think would have that cost India maybe sixty runs at least. I think. Yeah. So um, yeah, big turning point of the match. That's certainly the fail of the week for me, <laughs> and that's my moment of the week. What would be your moment of the week, Fazan? Um. I don't know, actually. Moment of the week. That, that, I think that's definitely got a... Uh, yeah, it's hard to disagree with that one. I, I think... I think maybe... I, I really love uh, how Pat, Pat Cummins bowls, sorry. So I would say um, maybe up there. I don't know if it, it's kind of along the lines of uh, of that. But I think uh, his uh, his ball to Agawa on the first innings, where it just dragged off the seam and cleaned him up, was just quality top of stu- top of middle stump, yeah. top of middle yeah. stump. It was just such a good delivery, but he does it so often. And uh, for me, I was just like, wow. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's hard to, to look away from that moment because uh, I think that was a big moment in the match as well, for sure. Mm. Um, but I think actually, to be honest with you, what am I talking about? Moment of the week, thirty six all out. That's the moment of the week. That's that's the that's yeah, like the yeah. biggest moment of all. Like that that basically is the reason why I lost. So 
uh, India recording their lowest ever t- uh, test score. I mean, that's got to be a moment of the week for me. Yeah, I agree with you there. So that's the moment of the week slash fail of the week. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's an epic fail from India and excellent bowling from Australia. So, um, yeah, so it goes hand in hand, doesn't it? So I think that's everything, Fazan. And anything to add? We've got some good cricket to look forward to. But I think yeah. that's that's everything reviewed from this week. So um, yeah. you got anything to add to your? No, no, that's um, that's uh, that's all me. Thanks uh, for having me on again. I really enjoyed no problem, it. Fazan. Pleasure as always. Yeah. Yeah. So next week should be a good one. I'm looking forward to it already. Um, <laughs> hoping for a double century. We could talk about a double century or something. Um, so yeah, so thank you for catching up with Venus uh, weekly cricket catch up. Hopefully you enjoy that. Hopefully um, there were some interesting points that you have um, learnt about this week. Um, if you do like the video, please feel free to like it. There's a button down here, and do subscribe to Fazan's Quality Shot channel, where you can see more cricket videos, and you can also see um, other sports um, that Fazan um, uh, comments on, such as boxing and tennis. But that's Venus Week, a cricket catch-up. Thank you, Fizan, and hopefully see you all next week. So bye for now.